the perfect job, the perfect school, the perfect set of circumstances, and still the relocation was denied. So this story is based upon one that I heard at a conference I was at. Let's just call her Janine. She spoke at a conference about her concern about the relocation statute and how she had everything lined up. Like I said, the perfect job. Not just the idea of a job, but a job offer in which the relocation statute in Florida says you got to have a job offer and that's an important part of it. Double her current salary. Found the house and her new husband also got a job at the same place. They're working for the same employer and he was going to double his salary as well. And they were going to move from maybe like a $300,000 house to like a $600,000 house. They had the private schools picked out. They had everything, their incomes, all the planets had aligned for the relocation to occur. And I mean, they, she did this herself. She did it pro se. She didn't have an attorney for it. She asked the court based upon the statute and the factors that the court looks at and her relocation was denied. And so at this conference, she was asking for change of basically the, the, the family law section. Um, and because of her specific circumstances, she felt that the statute as it was, and the statute has changed since then, but it's still an interesting story because there are still a lot of similar circumstances where uh, people are able to hit some of the factors but not all of the factors. And that's really important to remember in a relocation. My name is William Foley. I'm a Florida divorce lawyer. Uh, this video is not legal advice. It's legal commentary about Florida divorce relocations. I've been doing divorce law for 15 years. I've seen a lot of different types of relocations. If you're looking at the video to say, here's how to win my relocation and here's what to do. That's not what this is about. This is about the relocation statute and the fact that it is one of the trickiest and most contested areas of family law. And a lot of people would not have expected that. Relocation by its terms is you're leaving. One of the parties is leaving with the child. I mean, if you're asking to relocate for yourself, it's just finding a way to have substitute time sharing for their side. And actually Florida in the statute, it does say that any parent that's going to be moving is supposed to be asked for. It's not really, it's different than the way the statute was before. Again, speak to an attorney about those specifics, but that's something that people get a little bit tripped up on. They need to, you know, be aware. And in your state and wherever you're at right now, and you're watching this video, again, your state may have a completely different set of circumstances and different set of factors. Florida, it's 50 miles. That's kind of the hard and fast number. And that's another thing that people, they think, well, you know, I'm gonna just, you know, I'm gonna go to 51 miles. Nobody will, no, nobody will care. Um, that'll be fine. No, <laughs> the statute's very clear, it's 50 miles. So if the relocation statute applies, it's, you know, it's up to 50 miles. So people will, I mean, they will, scoot into that 50 mile range. I mean, just right squeaking in there. If you're doing it correctly and with the correct calculation of it, the fact is that if you're underneath the 50, you know, that's the argument is that the relocation statute doesn't apply. If you're over 50 miles, that's where it kicks in. And then you start looking at the other areas of the statute, whether the move is permanent and all that other kind of stuff. But again, they're looking to see if the parent, it's not necessarily just the child. Sometimes people are like, well, you know, I'm going to move, but it's not going to be a big deal because of this. No, 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 no. Like anybody moving, because then that's going to change the transportation. That's going to change the time sharing. That may, could change where the child is going to school, where child's dentist and doctors and friends are. It's going to change things even if a parent moves. So that's why the courts are very clear. Like anybody that's moving more than the 50 miles, needs to be asking for 
leave of the court or needs to be some type of an agreement between the parties. So relocation is a very, very hotly contested issue in Florida. We make sure that clients understand from the start that it is important to plead it appropriately to hit the different factors that you're supposed to hit. You have to be ready for a hearing on those issues. And it's just taken into consideration that if we go back to Janine's case, that you could have the perfect set of circumstances and the court in that one, I believe was denied because of the relationship with the father. And I've definitely had that in my career where one of the parents was extraordinarily involved, maybe had 50-50 time sharing or just you know, a very, very involved parent and the court has denied the relocation for the other side due to the fact of how involved my client was and you know vice versa it's going to be by the facts the court's going to have to look at those facts at that time and to determine if it's in the best interest of the child or the children so that's why this video can't be legal advice because your set of circumstances is going to be completely different than any other client that i've ever dealt with a relocation in or janine you know, in her situation, courts want to make sure that the parenting plan, the time sharing schedule, there, there's a suitable substitute arrangement. And there are some situations where they'll allow a parent to go, kind of get themselves settled, you know, figure things out. Sometimes they'll allow the children to move maybe on a temporary basis. We've had some temporary relocations where they've allowed it on a temporary basis to you know, I guess kind of to a certain extent, like test the water and see how it's going to be. And then to come back for the final relocation to determine if that is going to be in the best interest of the child. And, and again, it's, it's up to the judge and it's up to the judge at that point in time with the factors that are put. And that's why it's so hard. You know, Florida is 50, but it wasn't always 50. There was times when it was completely different and there was just it was just a mishmash of different laws put together and things and that's why they came up with the relocation statute and they came up with it to have some uniformity and here's some guidelines here's some factors here's the things that we feel is the most important here's the things that you need to do in order to be able to ask the court to move if you cannot agree with the other side now if the other side agrees and again we we have like too many to count cases in our firm that we've been able to negotiate relocations occurring um, or substitute arrangements if our client is you know the one that's not moving so you know there there's these things are not always contested it's just when they do become contested you know one parent's moving from you know one side of the US to the other side of the US how can that not be contested how can that not be a big deal please consider subscribing if you're not already subscribed to this channel you can like the video if you feel so inclined. You can comment. Uh, if you have some other information from other people out there about if you went through a relocation case um, and some of the things that you went through as well. There's definitely people going through this as I speak about this right now somewhere in every place, in every state um, that can benefit because it's, it's a time of definite uncertainty. Now, if you're remarried, and your spouse or your fiance or your boyfriend or girlfriend is the one getting the new job. Some people will go and ask based upon their new spouse's um, circumstances. That doesn't really work with a court because they're looking at the best interest of the child. They don't really care about you know, the new husband or the new wife or the new boyfriend or new girlfriend, they don't really care about that. You know, they're looking specifically at the child. So that's one thing the courts aren't really going to look at. Now, another big one, especially in Florida is, and we get this a lot where, you know, they're basically saying, well, there's more jobs over here, you know, and they're not really looking at the jobs that are, you know, in the situation they're in. I mean, they need to really just to go in there and say, well, there's doing more jobs in the situation. Now the court's really going to be like, well, have you looked? That's a tricky one to say, like, there's no jobs. Like, you know, I'm in Tampa, Florida. Like, there's a lot of jobs. You know, there's jobs. Like, that's a, that's a hard thing to say. Now, maybe in line of work of what they do and if there's something specific that only in a certain state or in a certain town or certain area or you know silicon valley you know that's the only place that has okay you know I, that that's a little bit different but that job portion of it you know is something the court is looking at to see the real you know realistically if um you know, if it's not just something that's up in the air or not, so.
there's just so many of the different factors and I'm not going to go through all of them, but you know, again, a, a big one is the preserving the relationship. And that's why the courts want to make sure that you have like a very specific time sharing schedule, long distance time sharing schedule that's set up and that makes a lot of sense. And that, you know, kind of, you know, goes in line with what the other side has been doing. So if the other side has been exercising 50, 50 time sharing for like years, and now it's going to be like only get to see in the summer because going from you know Florida to Alaska, that's a tough sell. But if the other side has not been as involved, that's a completely different set of circumstances. So the courts are looking to see the other side. So they're going to look at each of these factors. They're going to weigh each one and they're going to try to find out what's best for the child. So in closing, the court wants to make a transition or relocation like this as seamless as possible. They don't want to disturb a child's development. They want to make sure that this is the best thing for the child. So those are some of the things that they're going to look at. Thank you so much for watching.